The average salary for a psychology PhD graduate specializing in clinical counseling or school psychology is $64,140, with a standard deviation of $18,405. Find the probability that a group of 31 randomly selected psychologists has an average salary higher than $74,000 per year. Okay, so keywords here, find the probability, right? Looking for a probability. And here's some more stuff. It says that a group of a group of 31 randomly selected psychologists has an average salary higher than this value. So this is a probability problem, but it's not a probability problem for a single randomly selected psychologist, and we're looking for his salary to be higher than 74,000. It's for a group of randomly selected um, psychologists, and we're looking for their average salary to be higher than 74,000. This average is going to be our X bar, right? Because there's only 31 psychologists. There are certainly more than 31 psychologists in the world, right? So that means that this is a sample mean that they're talking about. And they're looking for the probability that that sample mean would be higher than $74,000 per year. Okay, so if that's the case, then our goal then is to um, talk about the distribution of X bar. And I'm going to say that based on the central limit theorem, right, the CLT, we know that X bar is normally distributed as long as n is greater than 30. So, you know, even if it's not exactly normal, it's at least approximately normal, so we can use the bell curve to solve this problem. That's important because it doesn't mention here anything about it being normally distributed, right? If we want to use the bell curve to solve the problem, we need to have some justification for that. Here we have the fact that it's about x bar and the sample size is large enough. So let's go ahead and use that then. I'll put my little bell curve tool up here, draw the bell curve. And let's go ahead and label the information from the problem. Remember, we normally have a z-axis and an x-axis, right? Where the z-axis is centered at zero. We're not dealing with an x-axis now, though. That would be for an individual psychologist's salary. But here we're not talking about an individual psychologist. We're talking about the average x-bar for a group of psychologists. So we need to put the mean here for x-bar. Well, luckily, the mean for x-bar is the same for the, for the mean of the x value. So in other words, the mean doesn't change. So if they tell us that the average salary is $64,140, then that's the amount of money that we're going to put here in the bottom. We're going to put 64,140. Okay, so that's the average. So the mean here is 64,140. Now the standard deviation in the problem is going to be slightly different because remember, now we're talking about the standard deviation for x bar, not for x. So they gave us the standard deviation for x, right? For an individual psychologist's salary. So we're gonna take that number that they gave us, the 18,405, but we're gonna do something to adjust it since we're dealing with a group of 31 people. We're gonna divide that number by the square root of 31. And so that's gonna give us a new value to work with. Let's go ahead and do that just to get a decimal approximation so we don't have to put that cumbersome thing in our formula later. So let's do 18,405 divided by the square root of 31. And when we do that, we end up with the results of 3,000. So 3,305.6355 dot dot dot. It goes on and on and on. I'm just going to uh, leave it there. And what I'm actually going to do with my calculator is store it. You don't have to store it in yours. You can just use that number and type in as many decimal places as you feel are necessary. If you put in, say, for example, 0.636, you'll probably be okay and get a consistent result here. But um, you, know, you want to keep as many places as you can just to make sure you don't have a rounding error introduced in the problem. All right, so let's talk about what we're actually looking for. We're looking for this average to be higher than 74,000. So 74,000 is clearly on the right of 64,140. So we're going to put a bar here on the curve and shade to the right because we're looking for that area. And to get that area, we now all we have to do is convert this number into a z-score and look that up on the chart, right? When we look it up, we're going to end up with the number from here to here, right? The area for that part, and we'll have to do some work to get the area in the tail. Let's first come up with the z-score. Now that we've got this information, the z-score is pretty easy. Remember, the standard formula for z-scores is x minus the mean over sigma. And if you use that formula here, you'd get the right answer. Technically, the formula we should be working with here, though, is x bar, because we're dealing with an x bar, minus the mean for x bar divided by the standard deviation for x bar. So technically, that's what the formula should say. But in truth, honestly, it doesn't really matter all that much here, whether you put the notation in or not. The work is still the same. So let's plug in the right numbers. We want to convert 74,000, so we'll put that number in here. 
minus the mean. The mean is the 64,140. And then we're going to divide all of that by 3,305.6355 dot dot dot, right? Going on and on forever. All right, so let's do that in our calculators here. So we'll have 74,000 minus 64,140. And we're going to divide that by that standard deviation, which I've already stored in my calculator. And we end up with 2.98 when you round it off to the appropriate number of places. So 2.98. So this is the z-score we have to look up, 2.98. If we find that z-score, we'll get the area from there to there. So let's look up 2.98 on the table and get the area from this line to the center. And at that point, we can find the area in the tail that we're actually looking for. Okay, so we're looking for the z-score 2.98. So let's go down this column until we find something near 2.9. I'm going to have to scroll the column up to do that. Okay, so it looks like there's our 2.9 position. And then we're going to count over until we get to 8. Now, 8's all the way over to the next to last thing. So if we go all the way over, we're going to find the value right next to that which is 0.4986. The last number is 2.99, so this must be 2.98. That's 0.4986. Again, that's 2.90123456788. So 0.4986 is the value we need. Okay, so we looked up 2.98 and come up with the number 0.4986. 0.4986. That's the area in the white space. To get the area in the tail, remember we have to do subtraction from 0.5 because half of the curve is 50% of the area. So we do 0 0.500 minus 0.4986. And of course, that's going to give you 0 0.0016 after you do your arithmetic. Okay, so the probability that the average for this group of 31 randomly selected psychologists is higher than 74,000 that probability is a mere 0.16 percent. So a very small probability that you would end up with that kind of a result. That's it.